So at this point, you mentioned to me right up the start, if all I had was x to the power of something, I do know how to integrate it. Add one, divide. Add one, divide. So let's just go through and do it for this. I am going to be cheeky and try and fit it on the bottom here, okay? How about this one? What happens when we add one to that index? x to the power of 3 over 2. And then when you divide by that, right, you've kind of got a choice here, depending on how comfortable and um, fluent you feel with this, either, and I often do this, even though I've been doing this for a million years because I make so many mistakes at this step, I'd rather just do an extra one. I'm gonna put that thing all on the denominator. Is that okay? Why do you think, by the way, I put these brackets here on the denominator? What do you think is the point of that? Like I could have, I could have just written it like this. That's still correct. Yeah, very good. When I've got fractions on fractions, you're just asking to get confused, particularly when you've got so many other things happening in your brain. So that's why, why I do that. This one here, it's just a constant. So what happens to that when I integrate? Yeah, that's right. Um, I think that uh, I, I hear what you're saying. I would probably say I would multiply by x because really I'm not saying plus x, I'm really saying times x. Yeah, but you knew what you meant. Uh, last one in here. So I've got b squared hanging out the front. This bottle out of the way. What happens when we add one to the index? There's the index right there. It'll be a half. And just like we did before, I will divide by that. One term, two term, three terms. Am I done with my integral? Very good. I need my constant of integration. And at this point, um, the hardest part is done. I just kind of need to tidy it up a little bit, right? So for starters, fractions on fractions, gross. When you divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of three over two on the denominator, I'm gonna write two over three. Is that okay? Now, you probably could just leave that, x to the power of three on two. Um, but I will tell you in a minute what you would do if you, well, we can work through what would you do if you didn't want to. That next term, 2bx, nothing to do there. Can you help me out with this last one? What happens with that half down the bottom? 2b squared. Yeah, very good. 2b squared, and then that x to the half is still there, plus the constant you told me about, okay? Now, I'm pretty content with that. That ought to get... <laughs> <laughs> After all of that, I hope that gets full marks. Um, I will say one minor thing, um, which is, if you wanted to be finicky about it, um, you see how the question started? There were no uh, negative indices or fractional indices. We introduced that. What was the reason again? Easier. It's easier for us to do this stuff in indices, right? But often what we try and do is provide back an answer in the form it was given to us. So just for the sake of illustration, if we wanted to, um, what would this be without any indices? You would write this as, hmm, x to the 3 on 2. Have a think. How would you write that? What's the simplest way you could write it? Yeah, very good. Because really, this x to the power of 3 on 2 is the same as x to the 1 and x to the half. Can you see that's a 3 on 2 right there? So the thing you just told me was x root x, x, there's root x, plus 2bx, plus, you kind of just did this, didn't you? That one's just going to be square root of x, plus my constant. But really, you can see, by this point, and just, um, if you were to imagine, if you were marking this, if you were the teacher, and you got these answers, right, and you were marking them, can you see the point of this question is not really going, can, it's not me, I'm not trying to say, can you go from this line to this line? I'm really trying to see if you can do all this stuff. So that's why by this line, I'm pretty happy. But I just thought I'd mention that because a lot of people, a lot of students ask me like, which one am I supposed to do? I'm like, they're the same. It's not the main focus of the question. Is that okay? So, just before I send you off to go and have a, another whirl at other questions like that, what was the thing that I did that you didn't do? Can you tell me which step it was? Um, well, I... I tried to use what's on the formula sheet. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand how to do that, so I didn't even. It's like I was a non-starter, right? Um, the formula sheet's supposed to help you as a memory aid because there are a bunch of questions that just 
fit really easily. You're like, oh, I, it's a, a standard form is what we call it. And you can just use the formula without, almost without even thinking, right? Um, however, there's only a small number of questions that will be handed to you in that really easy form. Um, usually you're gonna have to do a bit of work on it, right? Um, just one last thing, by the way. Have a look at this question. It's an integration question, but what proportion of this question is actual integration? Just, just the very last bit, right? Um, I would say like, I don't know, 10% of the question is integration and the rest of it is, number one, can you handle the algebra and not fall into a, a ditch because you just did some indec indices wrong, something like that. Number two, and this is the harder part, you not only had to do the algebraic manipulation successfully, um, this part here we really wrestled with, right? We had to know how to choose what algebraic manipulation to do in the first place. Like this expanding thing, um, I know to do it because I've done tens of thousands of these questions, but you'll know to do it because as you saw before, you're like, ah, oh, I'm stuck. It doesn't match any of the things that I've seen before. Um, I've got to turn this into something I know how to deal with. And by the time we get here, I turned this question, which you didn't know how to deal with, into several versions of this question that you did know how to deal with. Does that make sense? While well, you still got me, is there any other questions that um, are troubling you? I just have like a question in general. What would happen if the power was like a lot bigger than two? Mm. So are you saying if like this power up here was like six or seven or eight yeah. or something like that? Yeah, okay. So. I will do better than, um, where'd my mic come I'll do better than saying like, oh, hypothetical. Let's actually do one, okay? So if I gave you a question like, and you're gonna see in a moment why I'm deliberately changing this. Um, if I gave you a question like, integrate, oh, you guys gotta go. Do you have to run to a bus or anything like that? Yeah, I can just quickly message my brother to walk. Okay, I, um, I have to go pick up my own children, so I won't make this super long either, but let me just give you a quick example. Uh, let's suppose I did, Mm, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Uh, why not? Here you go. Okay, so your question was, what if that power up there was some stupidly large power? I'm like, I can't just expand, right? And in fact, by the way, that's exactly what the question is trying to tell you. When you get some number here that is impractically large, the question is trying to indicate to you, don't do it, don't do it, find some other way, okay? Now, here's where, and I'm not gonna tell you where on the formula sheet it is, but the formula sheet can actually help you here, right? This is a fairly simple function raised to a power, right? So in other words, it's something like this, some function raised to a power, okay? Now what I want here is to, if I, if I were doing this, remember I drew the connection between integration and differentiation. Like 90% of the stuff we know how to do with integration comes from what you already know about differentiation, but just doing it in reverse, okay? So let's just suppose we've got a question like this. You know the power is gonna go up when you integrate. So I am just gonna guess the answer is gonna be something like this, right? Like the power went up, okay? So I can test, like, I can say, is this in the right ballpark? If I differentiate this, right? Differentiate that. Tell me what I get. What happens? Can we differentiate this? Do you remember the chain rule? What do I do? Okay, 11 comes out the front. Yep, so I'll write that there, and then? Come on lights, you can do it. Okay. Are you content with that? Yeah, sure, I can just simplify. Is this correct? <laughs> You're like, we did it, I think so. My students often end up with massive trust issues after we've been with Farah. It's fine, it's perfect, okay? Now this is great, it's very close to the thing you want, but it's off. It's off by a factor of what? 33, right? So all I need to do is, if I'm like, oh, if, if this thing was, say for example, 33 times bigger, 
then I would just reverse it. I would say that's the integral, right? Now you can't just say like, I'm going to make a, an easier question because it's easy to interact with, right? I have to make sure that this is equivalent to the question I gave you. So if I'm multiplying by 33 here, what can I do to compensate for that to make it balanced out? What's the, yeah, the opposite of multiplication is just division, right? Do you agree that this question now is exactly the same as the question you started with? Is that okay? So you're like, okay, that 1 over 33, it just stays at the front of the integral. And then it's just going to be this thing that you mentioned, 3x minus 1 to the power of 11. Okay? Now the way that I would do that, like we kind of did that sort of step by step um, by sort of reverse engineering it, right? But the way I would suggest you do that actually in the question, oh and by the way, like before, constant of integration, is I would say what you did, but not only does this go up and then you divide by that, see how there's 11 in here? You also need to divide by, I divided by something else as well. What else did I divide by? Not just 11. There's a three, where did the three come from? It, it came from in here, right? Because you told me when I differentiated, I had to multiply by that. So I'm just undoing that, okay? So to answer your original question, if you get something like this and you're like, whoa, it's a huge power, you're right in concluding they do not want me to expand. There's gonna be something else I can do here, and this is called the reverse chain rule, by the way, if you wanna go and look that up. Um, however, when it's a two, Give it a go, it's not that hard. Um, you know a lot about quadratics, and even though the, the square roots make it look a little gross, you can see with some patience we got there.